It's day one of the FIDE Grand Prix finals in Berlin. So Hikaru Nakamura is playing Levon Aronian for points that will help them get into the candidates, which is being played in June. There are two more spots up for grabs. So Hikaru had white today, Levon black, and this is the first of their classical games. They play another one tomorrow, and then tie breaks on Thursday if they still can't be split. So okay, we had e4 on the board from Hikaru, and he goes in for this standard Roy Lopez position, which we get after these opening moves. And what we'll see here is that Aronian invites Hikaru to go down the martial line if Hikaru wishes to. So we had these standard moves, bishop to b3, castles, and now if Hikaru had gone pawn to c3, he invites d5, the martial attack. Instead, he went pawn to h3, one of the so-called anti-martial moves. We saw a lot of this in Carlson the Pomniashi World Championship match last year. So after this h3 move, we had bishop to b7, pawn to d3, pawn to d6, and now pawn to a3 here, Different tries for whites, but this is just a subtle improving move. Queen to d7 now from Levon, so you can already start redeploying this knight, but he just nudges that one up the board, connects the rooks, hands the move back. Knight c3 from Hikaru, so he's looking to come into this d5 square potentially, there's no c3 pawn here of course. And now knight to d8, so Levon starts improving that piece. And now after that knight moves away, it's quite standard to actually go d4 in this position, immediately strike in the center, the knight's just left c6, but instead Hikaru plays this really interesting knight to h2 move. So he clears this line for the queen to come to g4, and already shows some quite aggressive intentions to play on the king side here. So the knight came to e6, this knight came to g4, and now you don't want to take here immediately, bring the queen in with tempo. Instead, Levon played king to h8, a prophylaxis move, expecting that after takes, bishop takes queen g4, there'll be pressure here, and therefore it makes sense to nudge your king to the side. So after queen g4, Levon now has to figure out his plan. He could play with pawn to c6 here, maybe think about d5 later, but instead he plays this rook across to the e-file and he's got some ideas now of going g6 and potentially a later f5. So this rook now starts to over-support this e6 square. Now we had pawn to a4 from Hikaru. This one kicked on to b4 and here Hikaru dropped the knight back. He could have gone knight d5, hitting here, also hitting the loose pawn, but black actually has a really interesting idea here of dropping that bishop back. So you give a pawn if white wants it, but get a really quick f5 in. And after, say, captures, knight d4 comes. This knight isn't protecting that d4 square, as we note. So black is picking back up the pawn, and there's a big initiative there, not what Hikaru wants. So instead of dropping that knight into d5, here after b4, he went knight to e2. And now queen d8 from Levon, so he overprotects those dark squares, prepares g6, we had pawn to c3 now, an exchange occurred on c3, and now g6 from Levon gets on with that plan. So black is looking to nudge this bishop back and then go for a quick f5 here, and Hikari wants to do something active in response to this. So he plays bishop to d5 here, an interesting move, looking to change the pawn structure, kick this knight about. Now Levon could have actually played h5 here, which was a nice move, kick the queen to f3, and then it can never come to this c4 square. In the game, it sat quite nicely there, pressuring the queen side. But we didn't have this h5 move. Instead, captures was played immediately. The pawn recaptured, knight c5. So you're pressuring here, and the problem is that if you go queen c4, then e4 can get a bit uncomfortable. You're ripping open lines for the rooks, Say you go pawn d4, well now knight d3 looks good, you're landing a nice octopus knight there, tricky for white. So we didn't have this move of queen c4 passively defending, instead we had bishop h6, this active move going for counterplay against the rook, and you could go bishop g7 here, but instead Levon takes that pawn counterattacking this rook. 
we had this exchange on f8 and e1, and now you can drop the bishop back here, but instead Hikaru captures here. Levon takes here, and he's a clear pawn up. But now queen c4 comes, and this pressure is uncomfortable on the queen side. So queen a8 was played, it holds this pawn, you don't want to give white this passed one, and although it allows white to take here, Hikaru didn't do this by the way, if that had been taken, then you take on d5, you've gotten rid of your backwards pawn, black is doing well. So Hikaru preferred to maintain the pressure here, keep that pawn backwards, keep the space, and he played rook to b1. So rook to b8 now came, challenging the file, rook b4, and although these got exchanged eventually, it's not something Levon wants to do straight away, connecting these pawns. So king g7 now played, we had knight to g3 looking at e4, and now pawn to h5 came, you could go a5 at all moments in this position, but I think Levon was maybe slightly worried about rook b5 coming, it pressures here, will this become a weakness later, do you ever really want to exchange here, it's tricky for black to judge. So instead he left the pawn on a6, he played pawn h5 instead, the knight landed on e4, and the bishop nudged back to d8 here, clearing the way for the f pawn. Now pawn a5 came from Hikaru, so he fixes this one as a target. We had queen a7 coming onto those dark squares, and it's tricky for Levon to actually find lots of active moves. He's by no means worse here, the position's looking roughly level despite black being a pawn up, but it's difficult to unravel the pieces. So pawn to g3 played, pawn to f5, the knight dropped back to d2, but it does still have plenty of options to redeploy into the game later. The rook now captured on b4, black has to do something, that pawn recaptured, and now e4 came. So black's getting some pressure going against the white king here, but white has this opportunity of creating a passed pawn on the queen side now. So knight b3 came, looking at this weakened d4 square, the bishop hit f6, the king came to g2, and now pawn to h4 from Aronian was interesting. So he's starting this process of ripping open pawns around that white king. Later on he wants to break through, start checking, and get counterplay against these white queenside pawns. So the pawn captured here, and now the king came to f7 which was a bit imprecise. It would have been better on say h6 here, shielded by the pawns because this did allow queen c6. Hikaru didn't play this, but he could have looked to then gone queen d7 check. Now if you go e3, which Levon played in the game, this move is good, kicking the king back, and then h5, and you're starting to just undermine the black king position. Lots of tactics. So okay, we didn't have queen c6 though. In this position here after king f7, Hikari went h5 immediately. So still ripping open those pawns, but not quite in the most precise order. So the pawn captured here. Now we had pawn to b5, getting those pawns going, and pawn to e3 from Levon. He looks to play on the king side. Now you don't want to let black capture here. There were different moves to keep the balance, but Hikari goes for this f4 move. Not a bad move at all. Black does have this one coming down here, but it's well covered right now, plus the king can step across, of course. We now had queen to b8, and it's a really nice move from Levon, because although you allow Hikari to capture here, which didn't happen, then you check here, and the queen is actually invading on one of these squares. Say you go king h1, which would seem to be the best move, then queen g3, tons of counterplay to compensate this one, should be a drawing position. So coming back here, after we had queen to b8, king f1 was played instead, anticipating those g-file checks. We had pawn captures on b5 and queen c6. So black is two pawns up here, but white has this monster passer and lots of pressure. So e2 check was played, immediately giving one back, exposing the king a bit more, and now queen to a7. Here Levon is looking to invade. Pawn a6 now came, queen to g1, and now queen takes on c7 with check, but the king comes up to g6 here. Now the knight came back to d2, it covered the white king, the knight is an excellent defender of the king, but the king is still a bit too exposed in this position as we'll see. 
So queen h2 check came, king d1, the queen took on f4, and now pawn to a7. Looks really scary, but bishop g5 comes just in time. You're threatening mate, white has to deal with that, queen a5 was played. And now pawn b4 is a nice interference move. You can't take here, of course, or you lose the queen. You're still threatening mate. So Hikaru had to duck back, cover this mate. Pawn to b3 kicks that queen again. If you take with the knight, well, then we simply start checking with the queen on different squares. Should be a draw from perpetual. So that's why the queen moved again. And now queen to e3 was a nice idea from Aronian. So that after Hikaru queens that pawn, which was played, now you start checking. And the king can't come to c2 here, so it has to step up this way, and you're just running into this perpetual check. This is how the game actually finished. If you try and run the king this way, well, you can just start checking from h3 or d3. It's perpetual however way you look at it. So an awesome fighting game from both players. Ended in a draw, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. If you enjoyed this game, then do click here to see another amazing Aronian game. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.